full of sort of greenish liquid. The kind of valve ahead. Opening and closing spasmodically. Can you get through, Belson? Well, I'd hate to take the chance. If it closed again, it'd have crushed the oxygen lines. Wait, I'll... I'll try my hypodermic. <laughs> What's going on? The valve's opening. It's closing. Opening. Slowing down. Closing. Opening. Stayed open. I'm going through. Biotech, the new soak and free wash powder brings you SF-68. Stories which plunge vividly into other worlds, other dimensions, other times. SF-68. Keep the gleaming new wax finish on your furniture with Fledge. You simply spray it on and wipe. Fledge waxes and polishes instantly as you dust. There's no rubbing required. Give new life to tired-looking furniture with Sledge. Look for the push-button aerosol can. Sledge, now only 59 cents. I feel great. You are my sunshine, my... A moment ago, you had a sticking headache. That was before I took a Grandpa Headache Powder. Grandpa Headache Powders kill pain, soothe pain nerves and lift depression. Grandpa Headache Powders work quickly because their famous triple-action formula dissolves almost immediately. Get the quickest relief of any pain, all pain. Get Grandpa Headache Powder. Ah, Grandpa. Yes? SF-68 presents The Space Cow, adapted for radio by Michael McKay. The Space Cow. out of the spaceport. Grab my stuff, darling, will you? The ship's crashed. They must need doctors badly to call an unknown like me. Oh, don't start that again, Larry. Life passed you by. You with a brain that size and you're only a country doctor. I know, I know. <laughs> Go and see to the baby. You'll hear it over the spaceport in a minute. Antibiotics needed adjustable bandages. There's no way of knowing how many have been hurt. I'd better be ready to treat the whole crew. Mayda, where's my blasted shoes?
Tom. Well, I'm... Our injuries are all minor, Doctor. Nothing I can't deal with myself. But... Well, why didn't you telephone me when I was riding over in the bike car? I thought the crash was serious. The crash was nothing, Doctor. Linton here was excited by our near miss on Phobos. Look, we've no time for that now. I understand, Dr. Meltzer, that you're a first-class vet. What? Look, I, I hope he didn't drag me out of bed to treat a sick dog. I'm not very sentimental about ship's pets, I believe. Larry, no, that pet. Oh, come along, I'll show you. Yes, but, uh, the ship's across the field. It's one of the big ones. We'll have to be quick. Through here, Doctor. The crew are out, a few burns, one broken arm, nothing to worry about. Uh, this. It's what we're worried about. in there. For the lack of a better name, we call it a space car. Actually, it doesn't inhabit free space. We picked it up on canny meat, as a matter of fact. As you can see, it doesn't really resemble a car at all. I've never seen it. Must be nearly 400 feet. Uh, nearer 300, actually. About a third of the length of the ship. Uh, well, is that supposed to be my patient? Uh, that's it, Doctor. I haven't the slightest idea what the thing's like. How am I supposed to know what's wrong with it? How can I treat it? I've never seen one. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute before you blow up. The thing's sick. It isn't eating. It hardly moves. It's been getting worse from the time we left Canymede. It looks like a... Looks like a perishing dragon. Mouth all of 30 feet wide. Uh, doctor... Oh, we you're... meant to land at Marsopolis and have it treated there. But we overshot the place and something went wrong with our drive. We had to come down here. But, but haven't they any doctors to spare from town? Well, they're no better than you are. And they don't meet the kind of emergencies you do either. That goes for me, too. I'm strictly a curer of homo sapiens. Well, what makes you think that I... We've radioed Earth. We're hoping to get some information soon. Some of their zoo directors... And... Look, I, I tell you, I don't know anything about that overgrown hunk of protein, Musgrave. Uh, this should suffice. I gather we'll have to begin almost at bunch. Pickering reckons the thing's in a bad way. What? <laughs> What's that you've got there, Tom? A suit for you to wear. You're going down into that animal. Into, into that, that mass of flesh. All well, right, places I am. Look, Doctor, it's necessary. Well, there's plenty we can learn without going down into it. We want to keep this beast alive for scientific purposes, as well as possible value as a food animal. With the tests we can make. There's plenty of... Well, I, I... Yes, yes, of course. You can take the thing's temperature. But what would that figure mean? What is normal temperature for a space cow? What's the normal blood pressure? All the supposing the wretched thing has blood. What's the normal heartbeat? Has it got blood? Doctor, please. Yeah, if I go down in that... that diver's suit, uh, the thing's digestive juices might... well, it might melt the oxygen lines. Blast it, they might dissolve the suit. The lines on the suit have been tested. They can stand at least half an hour. If they begin to go, you radio up and we pull you out. I'll help you with the suit, Larry. Yes, but I... How do I get in anyway? Knock. Mouth looks at least 40 feet off the ground. And they've constructed a ramp around the other side of the ship. You get up to its mouth around there. No trouble. We've got the low gravity of Mars to thank for that. This suit was made for a dwarf. Look, um, what about getting the mouth open? I mean, it's shut. Am I expected to prize it open myself? Look, Doctor, I, I don't We're think... going to poke the creature with an electric prod. We tried already. Its mouth opens when we do that. Oh. Good. I'm glad. Let's get round to the other side. Uh, come with us, Linton. We'll need your help. Great hole. Yes, it's open, all right. I've got my light down the throat. Slimy. Sort of slippery passage. 
makes a turn to one side. We have got the lines on you, all right. You're okay? Suppose the jaws constrict. Uh, look, look, tell the captain I'm fine with dogs and cats. Uh, okay, we are letting you down. You can tell us when you reach the floor of its stomach. Here goes. In you go. Martian hillside. The gallop goes for miles. <laughs> Must be the beginning of the digestive tract. <laughs> Beams are all right. It's good light. Dr. Milton, are you safe? Fine, Todd, fine. Having a wonderful time. Wish you were here. What's this light in there? Well, I, I, I'm standing in a sort of uh, a pool, a greenish liquid. It's fascinating, but I'm not greatly instructed. I've got sample buffers. I'll, I'll fill them in various places. You can analyze it later. Lines all right, Larry? Fine. Walls about 20 feet apart here. There's a... Uh, no sign of macroscopic flora or fauna. Uh, hold, hold it. Uh, there's a big reddish bump in the wall about three feet across. Uh, might be a tumor. Uh, I'll just slice some tissue from it. There are several of these uh, bumps. There's a valve ahead. It's opening and closing spasmodically. Can you get through, Melter? Uh, I'd hate to take the chance. If it closed again, it'd crush the oxygen lines. Wait, I'll, I'll, I'll try my hypodermic. <laughs> What's going on? I've given it a shot. The rhythm's about two seconds. Valve opening. It's closing. Opening. Slowing down. Closing. Oh. Opening. Yes. Yes. It stayed open. I'm going through. Hold it. There's something alive down here. Very much alive. There's a gun in the suit. Use it if necessary. Gun? It won't be cruel. How'd you like to have someone shooting up guns inside you? No, I'll, I'll use the hypodermic. It's like an overgrown tadpole. Two and a half feet long. Might be a parasite or something that lives in symbiosis with it. Oh, it's... It's veered away from me now. Sort of swims in the fluid down here. Larry? Larry, are you all right? Maida, what are you doing here? I waited, and then I phoned. They told me. The maids come over to be with the children. There, there are lots of ships going by overhead. I wondered... Ships? The new services, Doctor. The case has aroused great interest. Don't be surprised if you find yourself famous when you come up. Uh, never mind that. Have you heard from Earth yet? No. We heard from the curator of Marsopolis Zoo, though. He's never heard of a space cow and has no suggestions to make. That's great. Thank him for me. Any photographers or newsmen out there? Half a dozen. Fine. Send them down. Take a few pictures. 
I don't think they can go down for a while yet, Doctor. Uh, perhaps later. Oh, why not? I'd like some company down here. And if the beast's mouth's open, surely it'd be a simple matter to... The mouth is open, isn't it? Don't get upset, Melser. Uh, you see... Uh... You mean it's closed again? Yes. <laughs> In this series of programs, ladies, it's our intention to talk to you about Biotex and promote it to you for the laundry. Now, we've made claims that Biotex will get rid of the stubbornness stains just by soaking. I dare say, like others, you feel a, a bit skeptical about these claims. And so we've been collecting letters from ladies who use Biotex just to quote to you from time to time in order to authenticate our advertisement. And a business of Delphi Beach Road, Sea Point in the Cape, wrote and said that Biotex is a very welcome product for the household. Biotex has a unique quality that it does what it claims to do. Mrs. Dove finished by saying, I have proved your claims about Biotex and am delighted with the results. And then a Mrs. Rita Stewart of Hans Trade of Avenue, Littleton, Transvaal said, We have tried your Biotex for all our children's clothes and also white underclothing and were absolutely amazed at the change in their appearance. And I can assure you, said Mrs. Stewart, that I will be a regular user of Biotex. So buy Biotex for yourself and your laundry. Why? How did it close? The creature must have adapted itself to the effects of the shock. We thought of sending down a photographer, but when we tried to get the mouth open for him, we couldn't. We still can't. But don't worry. We'll find a way of getting you out. But the oxygen... The lines are strong and the mouth isn't closed tight enough to pinch them. You can still breathe, all right, can't you? Well, now that I think of it, I can. Thanks for telling me. I feel like Jonah in his whale. Now, what happens if my suit starts to dissolve? We'll pull you out. We'll think of something to get the mouth open. Just don't get caught behind that bell. Thanks for the advice. I don't know what I'd do without it, Doctor. Oh, the blazes can be wrong with this great lump of... Oh, more of the tadpole things. Maybe they're the cause of the thing's trouble. They're parasites and they're making it sick. On the other hand, it might just as well be that they're necessary to this creature's health. Down here in a world I know nothing about, everything is just a shot in the dark. I'm pressing on. The passage, or whatever it is, is narrowing slightly. A blind alley. Can't go any further. Everything all right, Larry? Beautiful. Had a most interesting tour. Have you got this thing's mouth open yet? Uh, we're still working on it. Well, use anything. But for pity's sake, get it open. I'm coming back. I can't find anything apart from the lump back in the stomach and, and, and the tadpole things. Uh, both could be the cause of the thing's poor health. But who can tell? Larry, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. And I'll probably be the only person who ever got eaten by one, too. Larry. No, it's, it's all right, all right. Ask Dr. Musgrave to speak, will you? Uh, see you in a little while, darling. How are we getting on with the mouth business? Larry, they... I... There's a big machine thing. We'll have the mouth open soon. Don't worry. Where are you now? I'm coming up to the valves again. There's a whole shoal of these tadpole things. They're not attacking you, are they? Not yet. I feel fine. Just a bit short of breath. A bit hungry, too. I wonder what this thing would taste like raw. Good grief. What's the matter? The valve I paralyzed, it's working again. Opening and closing? Yes. And every time it closes, it squeezes the tube. That's why I feel short of breath. I... Uh, I've got to get out of here. Have you got enough drug left to paralyze the valve again? No. No, keep, keep quiet a minute. So let me think. A rhythm's two seconds. About. 
could drive through, but no way to take off from. All too slippery. And if I misjudged it, I'd, I'd get caught in the wild coast again. Well, I'd play to getting pumped up. I'm sweating and I can't even wipe it away. Think, that's a think. The tadpoles. They're coming. Get out of it. Get away and... I'm all right. I thought these little tadpole efforts were going to attack, that's all. I... Well, I... What? You all right? I'm alive. Listen, I'm going to try and get through the valve. One of the tadpoles did it, and, and the valve opened a lot wider to let it through. It just sort of whizzed up and over and through. How do you plan to get through, then? I'll grab one of the things by the tail and, and go through with it. They won't, oh, they won't let us all be caught. I'll have to jump through after one of them. Stand by. Careful, Doctor. Careful. Careful. Uh, here goes. Uh, here comes one now. Swimming. Up. I'm following, Musgrave. Hey! <laughs> The pipe! The valve caught the pipe! I can't... Can't bark! Can't breathe! Meltzer! Doctor! What's happening? Are you all right? Meltzer, can you hear me? Doctor! I'm still alive. The pipe was caught. I couldn't get it. I'm okay now. It's not a tumor thing. It's throbbing. Oh, well, I may as well slice into it, see what I can find. Come on up now, Doctor. Please, up now. Yes. Yes, yes. Incision here. Ruth, it's one of the tadpole things. So that's where they came from. Out of the tumors. There it goes. Back into the deeper stomach. Back through the valve. Ah! Doctor, what's happening? Trying to pry the valve open. The thing doesn't like it very much. Well, stop. Giving me a beating in here. Try another electric shock. Just wait till I get... get near the upper part of the gullet. My light's getting dim. The oxygen lines don't look the same as they did. Not so clear. I think they're... I think they're weakening, Musgrave. Oh. Oh, it's getting slippery. Doctor, I'm climbing the throat now. Shall we try the sharp electric shock? Go ahead. Leak. Oxygen's leaking. Not much time. The green liquid I've been wading through. It'll contain hormones, enzymes, antibiotics, biological chemicals of all kinds. Stop some of the tissues will be adapted to and some not. Those that haven't adapted would react violently. If I injected this animal's throat lining with a hypothermal stuff. Doctor, hold on. I'm going to try something. Now, just wait. Nice and full. Green muck. Now, to stuff it in the throat wall. To cause this creature to cough or sneeze or something. <coughs> or to make it... <coughs> oh, Yeah. Mm-hmm.
Dr. Meltzer. Are you all right, we darling? Can you oh, hear me? Dr. Meltzer, did you... Uh, 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 I, I'm out. What... What happened? The thing vomited you out, Doctor. You were right. You shot out. Some of the tadpoles you told came out, too. How did you manage to... Never mind that. How's the patient? What? Uh, oh, doing fine, as a matter of fact. Seems somehow to have recovered. Darling, thank you. How many of the tadpoles came out with me? About six. We're keeping them in the same low oxygen atmosphere. We decided that if they are parasites... They're not then... parasites. They're the young. What? The young. You take care of them, they'll eventually grow as big as the mother monster. Your space cow wasn't ill. It was merely gravid. Gravid? Gravid? What? Pregnant. Having babies. Uh, with children. Or in this case, with uh, space cowlet. I know what it means. But that was the digestive tract you were done. So? All animals aren't born the same way, are they? You did a good job. Look, would you like to take care of this beast permanently? To go down inside that monster again? Oh, no, thanks. From now on, I treat nothing but small monsters. Sheep, cows, and human beings. Now, who let these animals in? They're worse than the ones I met down in the space cows inside. Be nice to them, dear. They're turning you into a great man. Come over there. Now, before you go, I want to say, ladies, a little bit more about Biotex, the amazing new washing product now on the market. You've heard what people all over the country are saying about Biotex. They're saying it is different to any washing product they've ever used before. With amazing new Biotex, the stubbornest stains will vanish. Yes, vanish. Clean away. Just by soaking your laundry overnight in cold water, or for an hour or two in warm water, or by pre-washing it quickly in your washing machine. So, get amazing new Biotex today. You have just been listening to The Space Cow, which was based upon William Morrison's Country Doctor. The program was brought to you by Biotech, the new soap 